City water crews were working to renew lines in the southwest side neighborhood when they struck a gas line. Fire personnel were dispatched to a home next to the crew's job site to extinguish a small fire in the basement under the furnace. The fire department began to evacuate the immediate area and was still doing so as the home directly in front of the city's backhoe exploded, was engulfed in flames and crumbled to the ground. In reviewing the incident, the fire department noted that one of the 911 calls it initially received was from the gas company. The rearview mirror symbolizes an opportunity to look back at where you've been. None of the people involved in these incidents sat out in the morning and said, I'm going to be involved in a damage that kills somebody or hurts somebody or burns a home down. It just doesn't happen that way. Just because it's lighter than air, don't think that natural gas dissipating into the atmosphere is safe. With the right air mixture and an ignition source, this leak could spell danger. That's what happened here when a driver attempted to start his SUV in a cloud of escaping gas. Although no one was injured, the SUV ignited gas leaking from the four inch line, which had just been struck by a utility contractor's boring machine. A neighbor who heard a huge pop called 911. After striking the unmarked gas line, the contractor called the one call center to report the leaking gas. Nine days after the incident, the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission received a complaint from the utility contracting company regarding the unmarked line. In its response to the PUC, the gas company admitted that it had violated state law. Late in the afternoon, workers installing a telecommunications cable pierced a gas line. Several hours later, 91 homes lost gas service after an explosion occurred while gas company workers were on the scene attempting to fix the leaking line. A far more impactful telecom drilling accident occurred earlier in the year in St. Louis. While drilling in a conduit for a fiber optic line in front of a clothing design business, Contractor personnel smelled gas and called 911. In addition, the workers notified the nearly dozen employees inside the business of their call to 911, prompting the employees to move to the rear of the building. Once firefighters entered the building with the gas detector, the employees were immediately evacuated from the building. Our meter was going crazy, according to a St. Louis fire captain. 30 seconds after the last person exited the business, the first of several explosions ripped through the structure. A still shocked but relieved employee of the business was quoted as saying, had it not been for the fire department to come in and tell everybody to get out, things would have definitely ended differently. Speculation following the explosion was that the gas line locate marks may have been covered with snow. It's strange that in a, in a time where we're seeing excavators do a great job at, at damage prevention, that we have boring accidents like this. Damages can occur anywhere in the country. Sometimes a damage occurs and nobody knows about it for 10 years later. While drilling accidents such as Del Rapids, Yukon, and St. Louis result in instant explosions and fires, 
The impact of some drilling accidents remain unknown and unseen for years. Such is the case of a damaged 12-inch steel transmission line in North Carolina that was scraped during the installation of a parallel plastic distribution line in 2003. The gas company that hired the contractor to drill in the plastic line also owned the 12-inch transmission line. The fact that it took nearly a decade to discover the second party damage is likely disconcerting to those who question the oversight of such construction projects. Oh my God. Oh no. Wow. Hope to God nobody's inside. I know, that's a big The house just literally blew up. Where are you? Um, so for some um, apartment complex on Phoenix Drive, New England, New Jersey. There's a fire. All there's right. a fire. There's, there's, there's like gas, yeah, there's gas coming, and oh my gosh, the house, there's, there's lots of flames. Okay, Central, we got multiple uh, structures damaged here. We got one structure fully involved. We're going to need a water supply. You have engine 20, house court 31, engine 32, RIT 22 is on scene, engine 15, engine 21, and engine 53 en route to your location. I'm going to talk to the gas company right now. They're supposedly trying to shut everything off that's underground. Electric and gas or water. Chief, is this gas shut off? Because we still have that burning pretty good on the, the gas. Because we're still hearing uh, small explosions inside the building. No, not yet. The electric's been turned off to the complex. The gas hasn't been. Concentrate on the building. Do not put the fire out on the gas. Let the gas main burn. A resident of a condominium complex reported to the electric company that she was experiencing electrical problems inside her unit. Upon inspection, the electric company, which was also the local gas company, determined that the underground electric service to her home needed to be replaced. The utility company assigned this replacement work to its contractor, who notified the state's one call center before it began work. The woman was home on the day the contractor arrived to replace the electric service. While drilling a conduit for the new underground electric service, the contractor struck a two inch gas main adjacent to the woman's condo. The contractor immediately contacted the utility company to inform the company of the leak. The contractor did not call 911. 45 minutes after arriving on the site, the gas company had not called 911. Approximately one hour after the gas line was struck, a large explosion leveled one end of a structure as utility company personnel were checking gas levels inside. Five utility company workers and two contractor employees were injured in the explosion and resulting fire. The first call made to 911 was to report the explosion. The explosion took the life of the 62-year-old woman whose electrical problem started this deadly series of events. Asked about the locating and marking of the struck two-inch plastic gas line, an attorney for the condominium association stated, I think different people would have different opinions on that. You'd have to assume that if the gas line was exposed, where the drilling personnel could visually watch, the bore had passed the gas pipe on one pass and the conduit being pulled back through on the other pass, that if that hit the gas pipe, it was just simply an accident. It's all guesswork at this point. But two things happened that we know for sure. The gas pipe was struck during a boring operation and there was sufficient gas to migrate into those units to create an explosion. You know, I look at the scenes from Ewing and I wonder, what if the gas company or their contractor had called 911? Would there still have been a fatality? What do you think those first responders would have done? They would have evacuated people from their units. The first call to 911 in Ewing was to report the explosion. Traffic tie-ups, detours, and a few flooded basements are typical outcomes when excavators strike water mains under roadways. 
A water main damage can trigger other nearby main breaks as well, as it did here in North Carolina. But sometimes, the wrong main is hit at the wrong place. At about 4.15 on a Saturday morning, a contractor working on the central subway tunnel damaged an 8-inch water main, sending water into the basements of some of the most expensive real estate in the nation. High-end luxury stores were forced to close for several days as fire crews worked to pump over two feet of standing water from the basements, which stored high-priced merchandise. Although the water main was capped around noon, electrocution concerns remained due to the standing water. The impacted retailers have filed approximately $3 million worth of damage claims with the city. A utility contractor augering for a new pole drilled into a 10-inch steel pipeline full of gasoline. After getting his crew away from the equipment and calling 911, the crew foreman watched as the gasoline began to flow down the side of the highway. Shortly after firefighters arrived, a car traveling down the highway and alongside the gasoline turned onto a side road, crossing over the flowing product and igniting over a half mile of the liquid. The driver was able to stop his flaming vehicle and escape to safety. With winds whipping at 20 to 30 miles an hour, the flames reduced 15 parked vehicles to scrap metal. Fortunately, no serious injuries resulted from this excavation accident. In their report to the Railroad Commission of Texas, the owner of the pipeline pointed out that the contractors were digging on an expired ticket. The ticket was generated on April 23rd, and the accident occurred on May 24th. In their defense, the contractors indicated that when they submitted their one-call request in April, they received an email stating that the pipeline has determined the excavation site is not in conflict with an underground facility. Damages can occur anywhere in the country. They happen in wide open spaces and small rural communities, medium-sized cities, large urban areas, just like the videos you're about to see in Houston, Philadelphia. It was just a slow roast, said a witness who watched the commotion after an electrical contractor struck a one-inch gas line while trenching in a conduit. Those involved in the accident, as well as those that responded, said the hit line had not been marked. The contractor had called 811 and utilities in the dig area had been marked, all but the one-inch line. I opened up my patio door, gas thick and heavy, and I'm on the 20th floor, and I'm smelling gas that bad, and I told my wife, it's time to go said a resident of a 600-unit high-rise in downtown Houston. A contractor operating a backhoe in front of the high-rise broke a four-inch gas main, prompting the evacuation of the entire building for several hours. Residents not able to withstand the heat were temporarily housed in air-conditioned city buses. The gas company was only able to temporarily plug the leaking pipe and said they'd be back in a few days to execute a permanent repair.